Buddy Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. And yes, Saturdays with the Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern. A lot of news to get into here today. The Forbidden Door. It's open for real this time. AW last night, the big announcement. AW New Japan pay-per-view, June 26th at the United Center in Chicago. We'll tell you all about that here today. And uh, all of the news coming out of AEW Dynamite. No spoilers for the Rampage show on Friday, but it's a big edition of Rampage. And uh, we will have Fauntleroy going down the lineup for the show. Non-spoiler lineup later on here in this program. And he, I'm going to get him on the air. It's coming. We'll see if I can do it today. Want to wish a big uh, congratulations to Killer Cross and Scarlet Bordeaux. Now Scarlet Cross, or perhaps Killer Bordeaux. They're married. A couple announced on Wednesday they had eloped in Alaska recently. I wrote here that uh, we flew to Alaska, hopped on a helicopter, flew to a glacier for a very private ceremony. Pretty sure there weren't a lot of people there on that glacier. We initially weren't going to share the footage, but after further discussing, we'd actually like to do so. Thank you so much for all the support we get from you all. Whether you're a fan, friend, or family, you have all participated in bringing joy into our lives. You can check it out on social media. And then, of course, they wrestled for Anchorage, Alaska's Wrestle Pro Alaska on April 9th. So congratulations to them. Got all the other news to get into here today. NXT ratings. Pat McAfee may be getting another gig. AW video game. Your full AW Dynamite report. And so much more. Back in a moment to kick it off. Wrestling Observer Live. Observer.com. Almost didn't make it back here. Damn. I'm trying to find uh, old Fauntleroy. Oh, yeah? This little ch shibbity do. Slippery little thing, He's isn't he? He's hiding, but mm. uh, his day's coming. He's going to poke himself out a little bit later? I may have to handcuff him like Wardlow. Handcuff him to this chair. You're going to put hands on Fauntleroy? Man. Put hands on him. I just handcuff him. Yeah. Well, how are you going to, you know, get him down there and get him, you know. <laughs> he's not big. <laughs> it's not I'm like sure, I have to sure physically accost him. All right, uh, let's talk about the news. The Forbidden Door is wide open, it says here at WrestlingObserver.com. A joint AEW New Japan pay-per-view set for Sunday, June 26th, at the United Center in Chicago. They sure love that Chicago. The announcement of AEW versus New Japan Forbidden Door was made during last night's Dynamite episode after being hyped for the past week on AEW programming. Tony Khan and New Japan president Takami Obari appeared together on Dynamite to announce the pay-per-view, but were interrupted by Adam Cole and Jay White. Cole and White delivered the details of the event, Cole adding he will face Ishii on this week's AEW Rampage. No talent or match announcements have been made for Forbidden Door, but Tony Khan told Sports Illustrated the pay-per-view will feature matches with AEW talent facing off against New Japan talent. Tickets for the show will go on sale Friday, May 6th at 11 a.m. The event will air on traditional pay-per-view and the Bleach Report app in the United States and on Fight TV for international customers. It will take place during what is typically a lull in New Japan's schedule between Dominion and the G1 Tournament. Top talent like Okada, Tanahashi, and Naito will likely be able to work the show. Okada... Tanahashi and Naito did not work last week's New Japan event in Chicago, although Tanahashi is advertised for dates in Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia next month. Okada is advertised only for Washington. So, where to begin here? When AEW first started, and everybody wanted to see all the New Japan talent in AEW, well, there were a lot of problems. Stemming from the treatment of uh, many of the AEW stars by New Japan. There's a lot of heat. And uh, Harold May ended up being removed from power. And uh, once that happened, things started to uh, warm up a little between the two sides. 
And uh, then we started to uh, slowly see one or two guys show up here or there. And uh, essentially what has happened is uh, things are much better now. And so what we have is a joint show. And if you listen to Observer Radio last night, Dave did a lot of fantasy booking about what we might see on the show. And uh, the reality is you're going to see the top names. But uh, there, I was talking to somebody there last night, and there's pretty much an acknowledgement that fans are going to be doing a lot of fantasy booking. And, uh, you know, they're probably going to have some disappointment because everyone's going to just go all hog wild on every dream match they've ever wanted to see. And uh, you're not going to get all of those, but you're going to get a New Japan AEW show with the top stars. And uh, when all is said and done, you're probably going to be pretty happy with how everything turns out. But you're not going to get absolutely everything that you want, every dream match, because they can't. There is obviously some, there's going to be politics at work here, because you've got two companies, and, you know, New Japan's not going to go in there to lose every match, and AEW's not going to go in there to lose every match, and AEW's going to want guys that will be protected, and New Japan is going to want guys that are going to be protected, But uh, it will, I mean, for all I know, they already have the entire card all worked out between the two sides because uh, I don't know when, I don't know when this deal came about, but, you know, as I've talked about for a while here, this may be that second big announcement that Tony had in his pocket uh, several weeks ago when he announced there was going to be a big announcement and it ended up being the Ring of Honor announcement. But when he announced there would be an announcement, that deal wasn't made. So they had a backup announcement. It may have been this. So it's possible. I mean, especially if you look at the booking of New Japan, it's possible they already have a full card, all the winners, and everything. We're not going into this blind and and probably having to figure it out here. But I think you're going to see a lot of really fun matches. The crowd seemed jazzed about it last night. I think it's going to be a really, really fun show, and people there are, are very excited about it because... You know, a lot of the top stars have worked at Japan before, and uh, although things went sour under Harold May, I mean, they loved working New Japan, and people are excited to go there, people are excited to come here, and I think it's going to work out great for everybody involved. Yeah, and if you're a wrestling fan, I don't know how you can't be happy about this. And even though things went south under Harold May with the relationship, the reality is COVID sealed that deal no matter who would have been in charge. And we're finally going to get to see guys. You know, we've seen, you know, a couple of guys come over, but to this level on this type of showcase, you know, it's it's basically unprecedented, the very least since the last ROH show. But this is going to be, you know, that show at Madison Square Garden. I'm not saying on steroids, but it's going to be big. And it's also going to be a lot of moving parts, too, because you still have Fukuoka coming up for New Japan at the beginning of May. You have uh, AEW's pay-per-view coming at the end of the month and then Dominion before anything happens so you could see titles change you could see some situations change and i think we are going to get to see some really good one-on-one matchups you know aew versus new japan but i'm also looking forward to some combinations like seeing andrade back with naito because i could handle naito in an eight-man tag team match showing off lij against somebody you know the you know whoever it would be for for aew and and have a mix of guys from aew new japan so there's a lot you can do with this show there's going to be a lot of expectations and you know again it's just going to be an exciting couple of months here leading into it I'll go over the full Dynamite recap here in a moment, but a couple of other news notes. The NXT show, 569,000 viewers down 7% and a .12 in 1849. Remember when uh, Hunter said that things had stabilized? Well, .12 is not very good. 44th on the cable charts in 1849. Three NBA playoff games. Two games on TNT that topped the charts. Uh, NXT, AEW, Raw, SmackDown, all of them being brutalized by the NBA. And uh, they're actually up in most demos, but uh, the reason that they were down was they lost their main demo, which is over 50. The olds. Yeah, the old people didn't watch for some reason this week. (laughs) 18 to 49 and uh, men and women 18 to 49 up 66.7%. Wow. Yeah, but it was still a .10 in the demo, so it's not like it was like a ton of people or anything like that. Everybody that didn't want basketball is t- t- tuned in, I guess. 
<laughs> Apparently, man. Hmm. No debuts on that night, as in uh, these other nights? Like, uh, what was that big one on Monday everybody was talking about? The uh, Better Call Saul or whatever it was? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I just know it was the NBA. Mm. Don't go head-to-head with the NBA. That's my suggestion all you looking to start yeah. a wrestling company. Or run on, uh, you know, I don't know what day the NBA does a run. Actually, yeah. Actually, it's okay to go head up against the NFL. I kind of wish AEW would do that on Thursdays as opposed to, you know, Friday. Because if you're an NFL fan, you would know if you had to drop a day out of the regular season, it would actually be Thursday. So, please. Maybe. Please. Pat McAfee in talks with Amazon for a role on Thursday Night Football. New York Post reported McAfee and Amazon have been in discussions about the former NFL punter contributing they call him a former NFL. What about a, a WrestleMania superstar? Amazon is now the exclusive home of Thursday Night Football, starting with the 2022 NFL season. Yeah. Amazon. Amazon. Yep. I am so old. Mm. The role that McAfee's in talks for hasn't been disclosed. Well, I can guess. I don't think he's going to be a punter. There have been conversations about potentially airing the Pat McAfee show on Amazon Prime Video, the New York Post wrote. This dude is making cash. Hey, uh, we're open to that as well. If anybody wants, uh, you know, Wrestling Observer Live on Amazon Prime Video, we can talk. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Observer.com. Well, let's talk about this Dynamite show here. I found the show to be Dynamite, especially that opening match. CM Punk and Dustin Rhodes had an awesome wrestling match. That's Punk's new gimmick, pro wrestler. A bunch of wrestling matches, and there's holds and psychology and selling and nothing. like. This is new? It is, actually. I mean, well, they would never let him do these kind of matches in WWE. Well, Just like go in there and do old school psychology-laden matches where he can do whatever you want. He it's never awesome. forgot who he was. Him and Dustin so. got in there and... You know, they had all these great spots and Punk working he, over his leg and the old school figure four and then Punk's knee was injured and then his knee gives out when he tries a GTS. So Dustin tries a sunset flip and he cradles him and pins him. Loved it. There is a lot of people who talk about, there are a lot of people who talk about Tony Schiavone and the fact that he has gotten such a rebirth in AEW and how happy a lot of people are that a guy who maybe got ragged on way too much back in the day is finally getting his flowers today and gets another shot and is up there where he deserves to be. Dustin Rhodes, Dustin Runnels is another one. His entire career that was not spent as gold dust, he never actually got the due that he deserved. He was very good early, and yeah, his father was there. They pushed him early, but there's a reason they called him the natural. He was in a lot of ways. He was very good. But unfortunately, you know, he never got over that way before he became gold dust. And then after that, a lot of personal problems, a lot of issues. But man, what a, what a revelation, but my God, what a athlete, what a wrestler Dustin Rhodes is. And I'm really happy that AEW has been able to give him the outlet that he really, and so he can get the credit he's deserved all these years. All right, we got to get going here. AEW go. champion Hangman Page came out afterwards. It is Hangman versus Punk for the title coming up likely at the end of May. Wardlow arrived. And he's going to be wrestling the Butcher, but he has to be handcuffed. Anytime anytime they said he's not in the ring. So apparently they cut all of his clothes off to get him into his gear. We had Brian Danielson, John Moxley, Wheeler Yuta versus Dante Martin, Lee Moriarty, and Brock Anderson. This was your party match for the night. Just a bunch of great violence, and they made the Dante Martin, Lee Moriarty, and Brock Anderson team look good. And then uh, finally there at the end, triple violent elbows. Moxley hit the Death Rider. I don't care what you people call it. That's what I call it. And he pinned Dante Martin. Loved this with all my heart. Adam Cole, Young Bucks, and Red Dragon promo. They're teaming up for a 10-man. Adam Cole says, listen, we've all been losing, but you know what? Nobody can beat us as a unit. So we're going to find out if that's true next week. Had a video for the Joe Lethal feud. It is going to be Samoa Joe and Jay Lethal, but they are very strongly teasing. Satnam Singh versus Samoa Joe for down the road. We'll see how that one goes. Maybe it'll be good. I mean, if I had to have a match and I was green, it'd be with Samoa Joe. 
We had the announcement of the Forbidden Door Super Show, and then we had uh, Wardlow versus The Butcher, and MJF is in the stands, and he's watching the match, and, uh, you know, Wardlow's got to be able to do matches if he's going to be like a main eventer, but nobody actually wants to see him do matches. They didn't care at all until he started doing power bombs. And then he power bomb, power bomb, power bomb, power bomb, pinned the guy. MGF is furious. Wardlow's going to be making his way through big dudes on the way to MGF and Sean Spears. We had Kyle O'Reilly, Jungle Boy, Owen Hart Foundation Cup qualifier. Very, very good match. Not a lot of heat. Fans just sat there watching. And uh, Kyle O'Reilly pinned him with the diving knee, bombs away, knee drop off the top. Pinned him clean in the middle. And uh, the story afterwards was Jungle Boy was so disappointed that he did not win this match. And he apologized to Canadian Christian Cage for letting him down. At an MGF segment backstage, he paid off Jake Roberts to hire Lance Archer to face Wardlow. Lance don't even want the money. Lance, it's not what you make, it's what you save. But take the money! Hook beat Anthony Henry. And uh, just usual hook squash. And then afterwards, Danhausen got in the ring. And uh, they did not give Danhausen a, a full promo or anything like that, but this was what I was looking for! Danhausen says, you know what? These curses aren't working. Therefore, I want to fight you. And he jabbed his finger to Hook's chest, and Hook looked at him like, you're dead, brother. And off he walked. So it looks like they're going to be doing Danhausen versus Hook. Pardon me, Brian. How, how did that explain everything for you? Well, we at least found out the guy was a wrestler. We never even knew he was a wrestler. We don't even know that now. He's no, we are. He said, guy. I want to fight you. Yeah, They're going like, to have a match. Dude, the, the, look at Andrade's boy at the end tearing off his shirt, wrecking shop. You know, these guys get involved. Well, he was also a wrestler. Uh, yeah, he's actually really good, too, but continue. We had uh, Frankie Kazarian's about to call out Sammy Guevara, but Scorpio Sky shows up and basically begs him to let him have the next match against Sammy. If he beats Sammy, he will give uh, Frankie Kazarian the first championship match. So uh, Sammy and Ty come out, and they are heels. They're booed. They kiss. They get booed. Sammy says, look at you all booing me because my girlfriend's hotter than yours. Then Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, and Dan Lam- Dan Lambert. Dynamite Dan Lambert. Baby faces to the, I almost said a bad word. Ethan Page is cutting this fiery babyface promo. Dan Lambert cuts a total babyface promo. Fans are cheering Dan. I know this disgusts some people because some people like they just hate the Dan Lambert character so much they can't bring themselves to cheer him. But man, he was a great babyface. And uh, they're going to do Scorpio Sky uh, versus uh, Sammy Guevara in a ladder match. And then after that, we're going to get the mixed tag probably at the pay-per-view. I'll go over all the lineups here in a second because, well, we'll get to that. Owen Hart, Foundation Cup qualifier. Britt Baker beat Danielle Camella. Just a showcase for Britt Baker in Britsburg. She's out there with uh, members of the Pittsburgh Pirates. False Steelers. advertising. Whatever. They are they don't steal and they're not pirates. False advertising. Anyway, uh, then she cuts a total heel promo, but they're in Pittsburgh, so everybody just cheers her wildly. She's burying Ruby Soho. They cheer. She's burying Tony Storm. They cheer. This was uh, this was sounded else. like me walking up a flight of steps, though, man. A little, little bit winded there. Excited after that match. So I know that. Uh, oh, get out of here, you idiots! It's a gimmick. <laughs> so uh, they, uh, I've I've heard people make fun of of uh, you know. Surprised you didn't go Penguins. The uh, the uh, poor Excalibur having to run down all these these uh, lineups as quickly as possible. I swear to God, it was like a parody this week. I mean. I think that they pre-recorded it and then played it at, f- like, five times speed. <laughs> he was racing through these lineups. Racing through these lineups. And by the way, remember I had that big argument with Dave a couple of weeks ago? And Dave was going off about how it was proven that if you just announce everything in the very last second, it's going to do better? Well, they did that for about two weeks, and now 
They're everything in advance. 500 matches are rattling off in advance no. here. Rampage. Adam Cole versus Thomas Jerry. Jake Cargill. I can't even do it. But oh, we man, don't worry. We... We'll have we'll have uh, Fauntleroy do that in a minute. <laughs> Dynamite next week. Hikaru Shida, Serena Deeb in a Philly street fight. Wardlow versus Lance Archer. Dax Harwood versus Cash Wheeler. Owen Hart Cup qualifier. Sammy Guevara, Scorpio Sky for the TNT title in a ladder match. Adam Cole, Young Bucks, and Red Dragon versus Varsity Blondes, Dante Martin, Lee Johnson, and Brock Anderson. That's what's good. coming up here over the next week. Yeah, good. Let Tell us me know. what's coming up. Damn right. I want a week to be excited about it. I'm right. not on Twitter an hour before the show. I got a life. An end main event. Pr- you can prove that. Darby Allen versus Andrade in a coffin match. Dude, this Darby. Oh, my God. Incredible. He, he just got, well, he's incredible, but he got killed. Well, the last two times he's he wrestled Andrade, I mean, he probably should have just had an MMA fight with Andrade because he probably <laughs> would have come out for the better. Dude, he's getting slammed on metal and he's just getting ragdolled and the coffin's got thumbtacks on it. And then, uh, you know, what's his name? Jose. Jose. Whoever this guy is, he comes out. He gets slammed on the coffin lid covered in thumbtacks. He knew he was in trouble when he took his shirt off. <laughs> so he takes that bump, and then Darby uh, does his, you know, bullet-style tope, sending Andrade into the coffin. He slams the thumbtack lid on Andrade, lays on it for the win. So big win for Darby Allen in his... Uh, Kind of his match now, this coffin match. Poor guy. Sting jumped off a balcony. Sting Sting uh, got hit with a chair shot to the back of the head on metal. Oh, looked, looked like the so worst cool. thing that happened to anybody on the whole show, but he has to no-sell it. Then he leaps off this barricade, takes out all these geeks. Because they, they, did, they did it right. It's no DQ. So Private Party didn't stand around watching this. They were The moment the bell rang, they were killing this guy. Three on one. Then Sting comes out to even the odds, and he kills all those geeks. And then, you know, no DQ, so out comes Jose, and then he got taken out. I thought this was a, a great main event. And then the Hardys came out to acknowledge Darby and Sting. And uh, overall, very, very fun show. And uh, that leads to a very, very big episode of Rampage coming up on Friday. And uh, when we come back from the break, it's my last chance to find this little devil. Fauntleroy will give you the non-spoiler lineup for the Rampage show coming up on Friday. Back in a moment with that and more, Observer Live. Well, time for those Rampage, uh, the Rampage lineup. And uh, are you ready for this? I kind of got Fauntleroy to agree to be on camera. But uh, hmm. the agreement was that he... Uh, he wants to be covered in a blanket. So, uh, hold on a minute. Okay, come up. Let's do it. You don't need the headphones! <sighs> Fine. All right, let's do it. Owen Hart Cup Qualifier, Adam Cole vs. Tomohiro Ishii, TBS Championship, Jade Cargill, C vs. Marina Shafir, Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland Interview, Lance Archer vs. Serpentico, Eddie Kingston vs. Daniel Garcia, Women's Owen Hart Cup Qualifiers, Jamie Hayter, Tony Storm, and Britt Baker Interviewed by Tony Schiavone. Schiavone? Schiavone. What the f- I almost had a problem there. Get out of here. Man. Little idiot. I'm not letting him do that again. It's all or nothing next time. <laughs> he actually said ski a Yeah. That's, uh, man. Clear, well, clearly you know. a Jericho fan. A little moron. All right. Any other thoughts on this Dynamite show before we uh, go to the feedback here, Mike? 425-780-7566 is the phone number if you'd like to uh, if you'd like to give me a text message. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com at Brian Alvarez. Every show should open with CM Punk and close with a Darby Allen match. It would make things fine. Actually, that's not true. You can also rotate in any member of the Blackpool Combat Club into that rotation as well, too. You'll be, you'll be doing yourself a great service. 
All right, uh, let's see what we've got in the... Uh, by the way, uh, you know, we do this Wrestling Observer radio show and we review, uh, we review these shows at like 2 in the morning. And then I wake up and I have to look at this stupid thread on our board. And uh, man, everyone was like losing their mind. Uh, literally, all I asked was, how did he get dressed with his handcuffs on? I wasn't mad about it. I don't care. I merely pointed out that he walked into the building in clothes, they put handcuffs on him, and then he came out later still in handcuffs, but he had his gear on. Do we really need three pages of people angry? Oh, then they have to explain everything. I don't care, bro. I just asked. Did they take his handcuffs off? Well. Did they cut his clothes out? Is he a magician? I don't know. Could they just maybe have taken you know them off so he could change inside of his closet. I don't know. I don't care that much. Out. I just asked a question. Well, you should. I can't ask even question, ask a then. question now. Well, maybe. You, How you dare you ask a question? If you didn't Ryan. want the answer, then don't ask the. No, question. I did want. I wanted the answer, but I don't care that much. I wasn't crying about it. I didn't have tears streaming down my cheeks, wondering how he got out of his handcuffs and put his gear on. Sound I like just you're about asked to have a question. Tears roll down your cheeks now. Ask you guys know what a podcast to get you the is? Towel and do that. A podcast is is anywhere from from thirty eight minutes to an hour and a half of talking. Pardon? Okay, I'm allowed Pardon? to ask a question or two. You, you mean and not be taken seriously every moment, every time? You, you need to be taken ding-dongs. literally all the time. Now you're calling them ding dongs. Brian is calling you all crazy. That's no, I didn't call them crazy. Think. I call them ding dongs. <laughs> it's a it's a like, food. And a Jim Hurd creation. Uh, Brian, with the Forbidden Door event, do you see a mania all-out week with a bunch of shows around it like The Collective? I don't know. I mean, uh, I I don't see so much about... I mean, this would be more something like the, uh, you know, all-out show or or Double or Nothing. Those I can see becoming like, you know, because it's an annual event, it's always the same weekend, it's always... I don't know. Maybe it could happen. I, I'm not anticipating it, but who knows? Well, some look. A couple of groups are going to latch on. They might as well look. People are going to be coming to that area. It's a fly-in show. It is going to be for a lot of people. So it's and people are going to be whipped into a frenzy. Those guys are going to look for extra paydays. It just you know, I wouldn't fall over shocked. This person here says, "Oh God, must I read it? I will." Brian, didn't Andrade leave WWE because of his booking? He's getting buried in AEW also. Your thoughts? Oh, My thoughts are to, he's not getting buried. Must you be know, next to Ruby Soho. I got to bring this up here, okay? Uh, last night we were reviewing the show with Dave, and we were talking about the uh, the Jungle Boy versus Kyle O'Reilly match. And if you recall, uh, Jungle Boy got beaten clean. And uh, and Kyle O'Reilly just knee drop off the top ropes, beat him, pinned him, and uh, that was that. No interference, nobody running in, nothing, nothing like that. And uh, Dave said that he was surprised, and that uh, he thought this must be part of the story with uh, with Jungle Boy and Christian. Okay, and I, th- I mean, he is right. It probably is going to play into one of these lifetimes christian is going to finally screw jungle boy a plan that's been in the works longer than the triple h Shawn michaels secret plan with the undertaker just so but, Brian he's right but here's the thing though okay this owen hart tournament have you seen who's in the tournament thus far i mean they don't have a lot of men yet i think for men it's only samoa joe and kyle o'reilly uh, for the women they've got like six women already but here's the thing with this tournament, everybody. This is going to be a uh, a big, serious tournament, and it's it's in AEW. It's not in WWE, and everybody is going to lose except the winner. And I don't think that this you know Jungle Boy getting beaten clean by Kyle O'Reilly with a knee off the top. I don't think this is going to be like an aberration. I think this is going to be most of the tournament. Hey guys, it's like the the G one. Dude, everybody loses in the G1. Okada loses. Naito loses. Ishii loses. Shingo loses. The IWGP champion, everybody will. Everybody loses. Everybody loses. And it's not, oh, this person ran. I mean, if it's a Bullet Club match, if it's an evil match. But, you know, in general, it's just one guy's going to be the better guy in that match, and he's going to win. 
and the other guy's going to lose. And I think it's going to be the same thing with the Owen Hart tournament. So I don't think that we should be surprised when a Jungle Boy just loses to Kyle O'Reilly. I think we're going to see it a lot in this tournament as we get going because everybody's going to lose, and you don't want dudes running in and angles and interference and all that. For no. That'd be horrible. That's what bastardized tournaments, you know, because he like. <laughs> It's one of the reasons that, you know, WrestleMania 4 with the double disqualifications and bad, you know, slow. Uh, no, you want it to be when people think about tournaments and they think about, <coughs> excuse me, the best of, they want to think about things like the wrestling classic with, you know, Brett against who was a Ricky Steamboat. I think that was the only time they had actually faced off one on one against each other. You know, and that's what this tournament should be about. And Kyle O'Reilly, this is another thing to note, too. And I know, you know, I don't know how much he shows off his western canadian roots or anything but it's like they still haven't gone up there yet and there's where they're never going to beat wwe in canada i'm not saying never's a long time but it's going to take a hell of a long time especially in quebec but you got to showcase those guys too and owen hart being canadian I, you know i kyle o'reilly being in there makes all the sense in the world and the fact that he's such a great technical wrestler that's what i want to see in this tournament no offenses to to the jungle boys out there but I want this to be a top-notch tournament. Dax and Cash is going to be really interesting, too. And Dax, I don't know who's going to win this. You know, maybe it's Cash. But I tell you, Dax being rewarded for how great he's been to see him in that mix, boy, that's going to be awesome as well. This person here says, do you think New Japan will bring stardom for the Forbidden Door? Oh, It'd be boy. lame if there were no women's matches. Here we go. Oh, I, I don't think that it's out of the possibility. Dude, they're mm. going to do a women's match on the show. Yeah. So if it's New Japan versus AEW, you have two options. You either do AEW versus AEW, or you get some women from stardom. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no inside information. I have not asked. I don't know. But I think there's going to be AW versus Stardom on the show. It has and, to be. And I know everybody's saying, well, Stardom's got a show that night. They do. Doesn't mean everybody's got yeah, to be. Bring on two it, people so. over for a tag match or three. I don't need everybody there. Yeah, Julia should be over there. Bring Julia and Thekla over or something. I mean, again, I, I don't. I, that's story for a different day, but. Is. Fauntleroy in the witness protection program that would explain his shyness. No, he's just short. Self-conscious about it. There might be some other things as well, but I have to ask him. I'm not going to let him talk too much. He doesn't seem to be uh, hitting the gym, you know. It's a little, it's a very slight, very slight thing there. What's I told the, you he was small. What's the height? Do you know? I mean... Not that big. Right. Sting can transfer his essence to anybody. Hey, you know, it's funny. So yesterday, I was doing the uh, Figure Four Daily show with Lance, and uh, and he was talking about how uh, he didn't like the the part of the Wardlow MJF segment when they did the count out with MJF because he goes, you know, Wardlow, he wore disguise. He snuck in. He finally was within reach of MJF, and then he stood there. And so MJF turned around and then fled, and Wardlow never got his hands on him. So he didn't like that aspect of it. And uh, and as he was talking about this, I was thinking, I, got, I thought, God, remember that one time where there was that fan wearing a Sting mask? And then they took it off, and it was Sting? It's just, it, f it flew into my mind. <laughs> and lo and behold, I'm watching the show last night, and, uh, and Darby is, is, and, you know, you could argue this as well, because, you know, this poor Darby's just getting his buttocks handed to him three on one. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a guy in the crowd. He's going, ah, he's got a sting mask on and they brawl right next to the guy. Coincidentally. And the guy takes him and it's sting. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. But, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes things don't make sense in wrestling, but they work with the crowd. Because the and crowd the, will suspend their disbelief to get that big pop. With the right guy and with a guy who's got as much put in and has got as much goodwill as Sting because, in a way, Lance is right. You can, you can absolutely, I know people say he's being a wet blanket and eh, he didn't like the Forbidden Door name and all that stuff, but he, he can be, you, you can say he's absolutely right. Now, with that said, though, when you have a guy like Sting, I mean, he's playing the hits. We have seen this so many times, and him holding up that sign, I came for Darby Allen or whatever it was, and they tear it up, and he takes off the mask. It works 
every time. So do it every time until it stops working because that's what people want to see. And that's what makes it different. It's like when Stone Cold would do something or Ric Flair. There are some people that you can give passes to because we know this is a show. But, you know, with Sting, I mean, it was just, it's going to work every single time. He's he's a legend. He's fantastic. He's great. Person here says, it may be a long time away from now, but do you think Cody would ever go back to AEW once he is able to or have too many bridges, if any, been burned? Well, listen, we don't know and we may never know what disagreement Cody and and Tony Khan had. But neither has ever given the impression that they wouldn't do business again. And I know that that people had talked about, you know, issues between the uh, EVPs. And for a while there were issues between the EVP, but not at the end. In fact, I, I was pretty much told that, like, for the last year they were all getting along great. And, you know, Cody and, and I, I don't think there's anything stopping Cody from going back at some point if he decides that that's what he wants to do. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Little idiot Fauntleroy mm-hmm. asked if he could uh, step onto the other mic over there and uh, make a statement. So uh, oh. we only got two and a half minutes, so I told him it was all right. So, uh, all right, Fauntleroy, let's hear it. Don't listen to Brian. I'm not self-conscious, nor am I short. My legs are exactly long enough to reach the ground. I also understand that a series of creative vignettes leading to my official debut will be a much more effective way to get my character over to my beloved Twitch homies. Each and every one of you. No, don't start with that crap. God. A series of vignettes? You know what? He ain't getting lunch today. I can tell you that much. I mean, I'll feed him. Don't call, uh, you know, I don't know who you'd call, actually. You ain't making him the way, goo, eh? No, are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Well, what do you feed it? Him, her, it, them. Uh, we, uh, Mike, it's 2022. I think I went through all of them right there. All what right. do you feed Fauntleroy? Let's do uh, one more here. I watched the Nikita Lions and Natty clip that you said to watch yesterday. It was hilariously bad. Feed Fauntleroy and Nikita Lions. So apparently the uh, the the deal with that, that gimmick yesterday was that uh, Nikita actually was legitimately losing her voice, and that's why she did the big <clears throat> and then rattled it off. And I guess they just they had to go with it because she was. So anyway, you'll probably see another one next week which uh, hopefully will be better. That was way too much dialogue just to get to the money thing, which was girl on flexible or whatever it was. Right. Come on now. That's all right. you needed. Listen, we're out of time. I want to thank you all for listening. Brian and Vinny show tonight, 90 minutes on AEW and NXT. What could be better than that? WrestlingObserver.com, as well as video.f4wonline.com. And don't forget to get your cameos in today, F4W Online. National Keep Off the Grass Day. Grab Damn them now. kids. Wrestling Observer Live.